Yeah. The question is, what can normal, average people do when somebody in your life is struggling um, and you don't feel equipped to help them? I get this question a lot from my students who usually have roommate problems. Or, um, <laughs> I think the thing to remember is that when you're looking at diagnosing um, is one of their criteria is that the problem has to create a problem in their life. So you may have people in your life that you're like, you, you've got issues. But if it's not interfering with their daily functioning, um, at least from, from psychologists, I'm not sure if it's different from psychiatrists, but um, that's one of the big criteria. It has to interfere with your ability to function in your daily life. And so if it's bothering you, but it's not really bothering them, there's not a lot you can do as far as I know. Um, but I think that if somebody's coming to you and they have a problem that suggests that they're seeking help, that they realize something's wrong. And I think that it's easy sometimes for us to play therapist. But if you're not qualified to do the therapy, um, I think it's always a good idea to just very kindly suggest you know, that they seek help. Um, and let them know that it's it's just like going to the doctor. If they had a hacking cough for you know two straight weeks, I would not have an issue at all saying you need to go to the doctor. I had a friend that had a fever for a month. I said, Chastity, what are you do? Go to the doctor. Are you are you crazy? You're sick. Get help. And so I think that's the thing with with any sort of mental problem. We have the stigma of oh no, you know I'm depressed. I don't want people to know. But it's another medical condition. And if you can go to a doctor, I mean, maybe not. you're not going to your, your medical doctor. You're going to your psychiatrist or your psychologist or your therapist. It's the same thing. You're getting help for your problem. So I don't think that we should feel uncomfortable suggesting that somebody go. It, it does feel a little bit more awkward um, because they're like, what, you think I can't handle? You know, you know if you, like, have a bleeding cut that's oozing pus like I can't I can't stitch myself up but you feel like well if I'm depressed I should be able to fix myself you know I think just reassure them that it's okay and you know that you don't think less of them and you know just support them and try to try to release some of that stigma that people feel uh, I'll give you some uh, just some some kind of basic ideas about this because we do run into this uh, quite a bit uh, first of all, you know, in terms of suicide prevention, you know, we, we hear a lot about the, the risk factors for suicide. You know, those risk factors for suicide are pretty generic. They're people that are isolated, lonely, dysphoric, they're having trouble working, they're, they're maybe abusing some drugs a little bit more than usual. Uh, you notice that they're having, they're struggling. And those, those risk factors are actually the same risk factors for people that get into uh, automobile accidents more frequently. They get into you know, all sorts of risky kinds of behaviors. So what can you do as a friend or an acquaintance? You know, one of the things that, that I've always you know, suggested to people that were a little bit hesitant to go get mental health care is there's, there's this thing that is kind of the invisible mental health network in the community. It's teachers, um, priests, clergy, ministers, uh, friends at church, uh, but probably mo as, as important as, of any of them is their primary care doctor. And one of the things you can tell them is, yeah, I've noticed you're not looking so good. You look like you don't feel well. Have you had a good physical exam and, and you know, have you had a chance to see a doctor? Uh, because you need to go to your primary care doctor and, and find out why you're so tired and having trouble concentrating, you're irritable, things like that, because this could be a medical illness that they can treat really easily. And that gets them into the door of somebody that can actually uh, move them forward. Uh, I mean, that's all assuming they're hesitant to go to the local CMHC or community mental health center or call a psychiatrist or a therapist or a psychologist. That's all assuming they're not going to do that. But uh, trying to enlist that, that uh, underground uh, mental health network is, is uh, probably a good way to start. Obviously, if they're wanting to kill themselves, 
they tell you, if somebody tells you, I think I'm going to kill myself, you just have to call the police and have them picked up and taken to the emergency room. You know, I mean, I, that's, I have a, a very short fuse on that. You know, if somebody tells me they're going to kill themselves, well, you got, you know, you're going to be getting a visit by the police because I'm sending them out to get you. So.